So we're here with Dana Larsen, he's a sensible PC, campaign for legalization of uh, cannabis here in British Columbia. So he's, gonna, he's been a candidate for the NDP, he's going to tell us a little bit about the movement and yeah, right what are you guys, what, are we, what do we want to achieve? We're trying to do something sensible, which is to stop arresting marijuana users in British Columbia and start figuring out how we're going to legalize it and regulate it and do all those good things we want to do. So, they just, as everybody knows, they just had a vote in Washington and Colorado, but Washington's right across the border. Come to the stage. There's please. the voice of God there. Yeah. So, uh, so we want to do the same thing here in British Columbia. We're going to be gathering signatures to force a referendum vote. But it's way harder to get on the ballot here in BC than it is in Washington. We have to get a half a million signatures, and we only have three months to get them. So we're going to start doing that this September. We're just getting ready and organizing. We've got a lot of good support, and it's a good example for Canadians to see that our provinces can take a stand and can change the laws without having to wait for the federal government and to decide. How, how can they sign? How can, where can people, people sign? People can go to go, sensiblebc.ca and they can register there and then this September we'll let you know where to go in your community to sign up. But anybody in the world can donate, anybody can help out with this campaign and it would be great to have it legal on the whole west coast and that wave of freedom will continue to spread across the rest of North America and around the world. And, uh, and so sensiblebc.ca is the place to go. Things have been going really well for our campaign. You know, I started this last September, and uh, and we've been working on it a long time. And one of the best things is one of the marijuana activists in Terrace, which is a little town in northern BC. The day after I was there, he won the lottery and won millions of dollars. Oh yeah, he's, oh, he's, been, he's been going to the local food bank and other local charities, yes, and he's yes. given away like six or seven million so far to all kinds of different groups. But he's putting a million dollars into legalization. He's been very generous yeah, with us. He's also awesome. sponsored all the 420 rallies across Canada this year. And uh, so his name is Bob Herb, Herb for Herb. And uh, so he, so that was like to me, like the day after I leave Terrace, I was sitting in my car, literally thinking to myself, who, how am I going to fundraise for this campaign? Rehearsing my fundraising speech in my mind. I turn on the radio and it says this guy's won millions and he wants to donate to legalization. So it couldn't have been better. And those, that's been really good. And a lot of other things like that have been coming into place for the campaign. Yeah, so. I'm feeling optimistic about it, but it is a big effort to get on the ballot here in British Columbia and make it happen. So, so we still need lots of help. That uh, uh, every people has their own reasons to to support le marijuana legalization. Everybody loves marijuana for a certain reason or the main reason. What is yours? What What do you love marijuana for the most? You know, to me, to me, it's, it's, I mean, marijuana, the first time I used cannabis and I got high and enjoyed it, I always knew this was something I'd really like. I tried alcohol and tobacco, didn't enjoy them. But to me, it's more than just about marijuana, it's about all plants. And what we call this war on drugs is really a war on plants. It's a war on the coca plant, which is also a wonderful plant. It's a war on the opium poppy and on psilocybe mushrooms. And yeah, yeah, marijuana yeah. is the best of all of those. Nothing else has the same medical and industrial value, but really all the world's most sacred indigenous plants have been banned and I don't want to see any other plants go that way so to me if we can end the war on marijuana that'll help end the whole war and all these other plants as well and uh, and so and, and the more I've learned about marijuana like all of us the more I actually I forgot high the first time I learned more and more I read the Emperor wears no clothes Jack Herrera's amazing book and that was a huge enlightenment for me and uh, now seeing all the medical uh, benefits being you know really brought out and analyzed and then we learn more and more about it uh, it's the world's greatest plant and I really think we need to turn back to plants for the future of our planet and for the future of humanity it's about learning from plants and reincorporating plants back in and the first step to doing that is legalizing marijuana so that's why I'm involved and why I devote my life to this yeah cool <laughs> right on yeah man. so yeah since it will be seen go. people go about uh, sign up, volunteers, there's volunteers. Yeah, we have we need thousands of volunteers yeah. for this campaign. People all around BC. We got about three thousand people who say they're gonna help out so far. If they all do what they say, we're gonna make it, but not everybody shows up, so we need a lot of people to actually get involved. It's our chance to make history, right? And yeah, people yeah. say to me sometimes, oh it's inevitable, it's gonna happen, and I say no way, man. In the we 19, have to make it happen. In the 1970s, everybody thought it's gonna happen any day now, right? And 
same thing. A lot of American states were voting to decriminalize. In Canada, our prime ministers were saying it's time to change the law. That was a long time ago. And so it's by no means guaranteed. In fact, things are getting worse in Canada right now, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Like in BC, minimum, minimum mandatory minimums have come in. They've doubled the number of possession busts in BC over the past six years. You want to limit the medical marijuana? They're getting rid of all that? No, it's going backwards in Canada, and things could easily continue to get worse for us. But Sensible BC is a chance for the people to have their voice heard, to bypass yeah. our politicians. Every time in the states, except both states that legalized, all the states of medical marijuana, it was all with referendums. The state governments almost never are the ones to initiate this stuff. If they did, you wouldn't have to have a referendum, right? Yeah, so yeah. we're going to do the same thing here with a referendum in BC, and that's how I think we're going to make change. Passing, getting rid of our politicians and doing it ourselves. So when is the, again, the, the signing, when is it supposed to start? We have three months, so we're going to start that around the first or second week of September. Okay. And that's going to go into December. But uh, people can register as a canvasser to volunteer starting in the middle of July. Okay. So between the middle of July and middle of September, people got to register as canvassers, volunteer, get involved. And then we hit the ground running in the middle, the middle of September to get all the signatures we need. We need a big head start to make this happen. It's only ever been done do once. It, BC history before with the HST vote, so we're trying to make history we with can the do THC it. vote here, and we're going to make it happen. We can do it because everybody smokes here, really, like doctors and others, family, yeah. you know, musicians, musicians in band music. You know, everybody smokes here. So. It's just a matter of Let's just normalize and it. activation. Yeah, exactly. Normalize it and stop wasting all these tax payers' money. Right. Absolutely. Now we're spending over $10 million a year in BC just to bust and detain marijuana users. Just to go after the tokers. Forget all the gardening and stuff. Just to go $10 million a year. Now they're busting bong shops in BC, right? They, I was up in Prince Rupert a few days ago. They, they busted the local bong shop and they went to the two other shops that sell a few little pipes. The tobacco shop sells a few bongs and they said, you take these out of here and we're going to come back tomorrow and arrest you. So I made up a trophy for the RCMP, for the Prince Rupert RCMP. Oh, yeah. They said, most police time wasted. They said they spent six months investigating bongs. So I brought this trophy up and I made a speech in front of the RCMP station and I, I went inside and presented it to the, the receptionist there for the RCMP and uh, I think I wanted to make a point that they have a lot better things they should be working on in this province than going after bongs, which are really a medical device we now know. Water filtration makes marijuana safer, makes marijuana better for medical users and to take these things off the shelves it's just making it's not going to stop one person from smoking pot it's just yeah, going to yeah, stop yeah. them from smoking pot safely yeah. that's all it's going to do and so yeah. it's a real waste of police time so that was kind of so, nervy but it was fun yeah, to go up exactly. there and do our do that exactly. for them so that money let's spend it on, on health education or you know so many homeless guys so many better inside things. things like inside that's a really cool uh, initiative it is absolutely so, fuck. We're just wasting tax, tax, uh, tax money. We're wasting lives, we're wasting dollars, we're wasting time. We're separating families. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's time for all that to come to an end. We can do it right here in BC and make it happen.